1994. A game by Nintendo. Nintendo presents... Metroid 3. Otherwise known as... Super Metroid. Hey guys! And welcome to my fourth LP. We're gonna be playing Super Metroid. Alright, let's get this started. Uh, that's... That's my practice file you can see there. We're just gonna get rid of... Uh, the first file. Yeah. Because, you know, why not? And, uh, let's get this started. Um... Alright. For anyone who's interested... Uh, wait. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. That 16-bit voice. So, uh... For anyone who's interested, I am playing this on Wii Virtual Console. I don't actually own a Super Nintendo, unfortunately. But, uh... That's okay. And I'm also playing this on GameCube controller. So, uh, Samus first battled the Metroids on Planet CB. It was there where she foiled the plans of the Space Pirate Leader Mother Brain to use creatures to attack galactic civilization. This is giving us a summary of the previous two games up to when this game was made. It's a blowing Mother Brain up. Samus next fought the Metroids on their homeworld, SL 388. She completely eradicated them, except for Lova, which after hatching, followed me like a confused child. I don't know if that implies that Samus thought that it was her child, and that she thought that it was her mother. Or she was its mother. Stupid fucking mother am. But I won't get into that. At least not yet. I personally delivered it to the Galactic Research Station at Sears. So, or Suez? COC? Oh, something like that. The scientists could study its energy producing qualities. Alright. Nice. The scientists' findings were astounding. They discovered that the powers of the Metroid might be honest for the good of civilization. Alright. Cool. Great. <laughs> Satisfied that all was well, I left the station to seek a new bounty to hunt. But I had hardly gone beyond the asteroid belt when I picked up at a stress signal. See, the station was under attack! And so begins Metroid. Well, su Super Metroid, not regular Metroid. Alright, so you may be wondering, why am I playing Super Metroid? What led me to break this game? Well, if you don't know already, I'll tell you. Super Metroid is my favorite game of all time. Just, I find it to be a well-made game. Even though I didn't grow up with it. I only found this game maybe two, three years ago. And it's my favorite game of all time. So there's not any nostalgia really in it. I only found it because, uh... Susan Mass Brothers Ball had a really short, uh, so-called masterpiece, quote-unquote, for it. And, uh, what I- Oh, hey, we found the lava! Awesome, we win the game! There we go, that was the LP. Uh, let's go home. We got it. Wait, I mean, how do we pick it up? Yeah. Uh-oh. Ah, it's been late! So here we have our first, quote-unquote, boss battle of the game, except for it's completely scripted. Uh, you cannot actually really beat Ridley, because there's two things that can happen in this fight. You can beat him, which I'll attempt to do, I guess, but that's rather hard to do. Or you can get your health knocked down to below 30 health. When that happens, whenever you uh, do a set amount of damage to him, or uh, get your health knocked down below 30. It'll trigger the next part of the game to activate. Pretty much, if you're going to be trying to defeat him and not take the 30 damage to make the game go faster, you just want to avoid his tail, because that does the most damage, while everything else that he hits you with does, I think, 3 damage. 
And one more hit, I'm gonna die, so. Unfortunately, I did not, quote unquote, beat him. But all he would do is drop the Metroid, then go back and pick it up, and then this same thing would happen anyway. But now I have to escape. Which is, you know, they give you plenty of time. By the way, you don't have to shoot these doors at all. You can just have to stand in front of them. Ah, uh, these gas things are a little annoying. They don't. They sound like they do help, uh, damage to you. They don't actually. They just kind of stop your momentum. All right. Then on to uh, this, and then it starts tilting. A little touch I really like about this game. This, I mean, it really feels like the station is falling apart. And there we go. So, uh, see the station explodes. Kind of similar to uh, how the Frigate Orpheon happens in Metroid Prime. You go there, you fight a little mini boss, then it starts exploding, then you gotta escape. Um, and that kind of brings me into a one point that I want to make about this game. This LP kind of serves four purposes. One, to state why this game is my favorite game of all time. Two, to state why Metroid is my favorite series of all time. Three, to state why Retro Studios did a great job with the, uh, Prime Trilogy and how it really, like, has the spirit of Metroid in it. And four, to tell why Metroid Other M was an abomination that shouldn't live. Alright. So, starting off here, let's go to the left. Even though most games will go to the right at first, this game you go to the left. Don't ask me why. So here we are, in, a uh, abandoned Zebus. Or Zebes, or Zebes, or Zebedubadabadaba, or however you want to pronounce it. I don't really care. The planet from the first game. Well, uh, we defeated the Space Pirates the first time. If you play the first game, this room should look familiar. It's the, uh, escape room from the very last room of the first game, where you escaped from Mother Brain. Then here's the Mother Brain battle chamber. It's all abandoned and creepy, and there's bugs that scare, uh, that, like, run away from us. Nice detail with the bugs. They don't have to add bugs that run away from us, but they did! Anyway. So, yeah, I am using a GameCube controller. Uh. I never had a Super Nintendo controller, but I feel the GameCube controller kind of emulates it well. I mean, you got A for your jump, B to do the run, X to shoot, L to look shoot down, all to shoot up, both to shoot straight up, uh, and then down and up and squaggle, and obviously. So, here we have the morphing ball, just like in the first game, if you went left, you get the morphing ball. Same here, too. And, uh, nothing getting, oh. Huh, that's weird. It's a bit, it's supposed to be abandoned, but it's, uh, something's looking at me. Oh, well. Maybe I didn't destroy everything here. That's okay. So moving on, back in... I mean, that was the original room of the first Metroid. That's pretty cool. I like how they really remake the stuff in here. Intelligent Systems, who made this game, by the way, uh, did a very good job with this game as well. Which is why it's my favorite game of all time. Here we got a Chozo statue with some missiles. Well, what used to be Kratos Hideout in the original game. But, uh, no longer. And with missiles, if you if you know anything about Metroid, you know that red doors require missiles to open. And in this game, it takes five. So, pretty standard progression here. Uh, and there's another one of those eye things. What? Who's stalking me? Who's here? There shouldn't be anyone here. I blew up this... Well, I didn't blow up this planet, but I blew up the station on this planet of the space pirates. So why are there still things? Why are the things? And why is there an E-Tank that I can't get here? Oh, a point on point. Moving on! Man, this, this place, I mean, it's all this creepy. It's abandoned, the music doesn't help in the background. And we're gonna go up the elevator, and those faces just turn to look at me, and... Oh man, I'm not getting a very good vibe about this place. Not very good at all. Oh well. It's probably nothing. Ah, Spice Pirates! Ah, where did they come from? Ah. Okay, enough of that. 
This brings up a good point already about why I love this game so much. And that is this game's ability to tell a story without text. Now before anyone said that, yes, I realized there was text in the very beginning of the game. But most of that was summary and plot development to actually start this game. Once you can control Samus, there's no more text to tell the story. And yet, here we have a story about how Samus went into the uh, attacked space station, saved the baby Metroid from Ridley. Uh, then the flip stage, well, she tried to save the, she didn't actually save the baby Metroid from Ridley. But, uh, then, can you? Thank you. Uh, anyway, she... The... God, what am I trying to say? The space station started exploding. She went down to ZB's to look for Ridley and the baby Metroid. Then it's revealed that the entire station is still alive. All that through no, no text. You felt it as a... as a player. A lot of people talk about cutscenes nowadays that involve the player more, like... You can actually move during cutscenes. And I'm just like, well, screw that! Super Metroid had it, like, fi 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 500 years ago. And by 500, I mean 15, but whatever. Anyway. So, uh... Maybe I should be explaining more. Nah. Uh, most of this game is pretty self-explanatory. Here we have a map station, which is very useful in a game like this, which is very non-linear. All the pink... Uh, rooms are where we haven't been, all the blue rooms are where we have been. Wait, scratch that with this set. Uh, all the pink rooms are where we have been, all the blue rooms are where we haven't been. And I have this OCD obsession of getting all the blue rooms to be pink. And if it's not one, it just drives me insane. Uh, those small circles of pink that you see dropping from enemies occasionally, all health pickups, any missile shaped things, obviously missile pickups. Pretty self explanatory stuff. Alright, so hey, stupid. Alright. So pretty much we've been following a natural progression of thing. So we've only really had one path we could go. Which is down to Brinstar, get the morph ball, get the missiles, and we eventually are led to here. And we need missiles to get in here, so. Pretty much following a natural flow. And alright, bombs! Sorry, we couldn't see the power up there again. Click it badly. Alright, cool, let's get out and. Oh no! The door's locked. How do I open it? Oh, Jesus, it's alive! <laughs> Here we have our first true mini boss of the uh, game Torzo. Also known as the. Uh, Chozo statue to people who are less informed. Pretty much, it'll come up to you, try to slash you, it'll shoot these eggs at you that you can shoot for missile and health upgrades. You just shoot it a lot of times with missiles, or if you want to add that, just regular shots. And it's dead. Pretty easy. Alright. So, uh, this game. A lot of people find Metroid games, like, confusing and, like, backtrack heavy and stuff, but I agree that, like, the expansions are like that, but really, for most of the game, there's only one place you can go. Or if there's another place, it'll lead you to, like, a map station or an energy revive or something like that. But, like, to progress, there's only, like, one way to go, really. Because every path you can go to will either lead you to, like, a map station, like I said before, an expansion, or the way you're supposed to go. Right here, I'm going to be making a brief detour down here. Because there happens to be a missile pack in here. That you need the bombs to destroy these things for. And, I mean, there it is. Pretty self explanatory. Alright. Now that we're done with that, you can also just skip all that. Because who needs that? Who needs to waste time with that? And, uh, 
I'm using some wall jumps. That's going to be seen much, a lot in this LP probably, because I like using wall jumps. And uh, here we have a fifth save station, which I think is also a good place to stop for the first episode. So uh, next time on Let's Play Super Metroid, we will be continuing in uh, Criteria and Zebis or whatever you want to call it, and seeing what else we can do. Alright, see you guys then.